Welcome everyone to our final open online experience meeting for the year 2013-2014. It has been a long 10 months following the school year, um, but it has been a, a really amazing journey and I'm glad that we actually still have people coming. I remember when we were first starting this, we were wondering if anyone was going to show up and, and they did. And, uh, and now 10 months later, we still have people coming and we've met pretty much every week for the last 10 months in one way, shape or form or another, either through a Twitter chat or a synchronous session like this. Um, we've uh, been part of the Connected Educator Month from the Department of Education. We have talked about open source, open resources, open educational resources. We've talked about digital citizenship and digital literacy. We've done things with Mozilla. Um, and it really has been an amazing experience for, for me and I know for some other people. So we're just going to, to spend the next hour or so, as long as it takes us to reflect on some of the learning and we have uh, four of our planning group here just uh, to celebrate with us. So if anyone has something really special about this year that they'd like to share with us, uh, I'm just going to turn over the floor and, and see where the conversation goes. Well, Brendan, what I'm doing right now is I'm opening up my other screen because I want to make sure that I pull up our um, our group on Google. So somebody else talk first, and then I'm going to pull it up so that we can make sure we revisit some of the things that we may have forgotten about. So I'm going to scroll through that and look through. That's a great idea. And, okay. and if the screen starts changing while I'm doing that, it's because I'm going to try and keep our faces nice and big and at the same time get some screen share going because I don't think there'll be much of a chat right now. So I'll shift things around. You guys start talking while I play with stuff. All right. Sounds good. I'd be happy to, to jump in here. Um, I haven't been as active this past month uh, with things. I know Wednesday nights were a little bit tough for me, but um, I'd like to start by thanking everybody, uh, especially Brendan, for being uh, putting it on this MOOC on your back and carrying it all the way through and, and getting to this point is, is, is pretty cool. Um, I think as I reflect on it, I think uh, I'm planning on putting together a blog post on my reflection and haven't gotten it, but I think the title as I was thinking about it this morning is going to be The Little Moot That Could. Because um, I think uh, it may not have been as massive as as we necessarily hoped and, and gotten more participants, but those that were participating I think got some incredible things out of this experience. And uh, um, I think for us as leaders, being able to uh, connect with each other and build and, and collaborate has has been really rewarding. And I want to thank Julie especially for uh, her collaboration as we did the curating content uh, sessions in February that uh, I, I found it to be really enjoyable to, to lead that those sessions and, and work with you on that. And I think there was some really neat content and information and connections with the different people who uh, we were able to bring in to participate in that that, that was really fun. And uh, you know, I think I think back to September and being a little bit wondering how things were going to go with the uh, the zombie apocalypse and uh, Twitter versus zombies and just having a ball with it. And uh, along with the uh, Connected Educator Month and other, other things, I think there's, as people look back and, and see the work and the posts that people put together and uh, some of the reflections of the participants, I'm thinking of Heather uh, and Zetinsmeyer, um, the math teacher who's been doing BYOD and uh, has really uh, been very diligent in, in reflecting on her practice and stuff. It's been really cool to see that. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for hanging in there and putting this together. 
Yeah, that reminds me. That it start, yeah, I remember it. starting with the Twitters versus zombies, TV, T versus Z. Now it's because Twitter doesn't yeah. want us to use the name, but uh, yeah, that was great, and it and it's starting up again uh, in June, and that's something that was separate from us, but they they um, a great way to learn how to use Twitter and and, and uh, collect yourself some followers. Yep. Were you going to say so something? Second, with uh, a lot of what Michael, uh, Michael said in terms of our work together, and um, I think for me that that was uh, there were two goals for me, for me in OOE, and one was to, to work behind the scenes, to to learn to work online with other people, collaborate online, to get through my experience in that way, and so um, that was really played out in the month of February and. and Leading up to February and February, and I I was really pleased with how it went. I, I learned a ton, and I think um, you know we put together a, a, a month where there was um, some valuable learning for people who were interested in that topic. So that was that was a good a good thing, and and I really um, thank you for your leadership there, Michael. And uh, um, you know I would love, love to do that kind of thing again. And then the other, uh, the other part of it was about in and around professional learning. So sort of thinking about the whole loop. And um, when I signed up to be a, a, a part of the planning team for OE13, I was working as a as a coach, and um, a lot of my time was spent in how to get people, educators involved in you know, professional learning. How Face to face um, or, or online, in the in either case, um, and that you know, takes a lot of time of all of us. I know, and thinking about our colleagues and how to engage them in um, in that special learning stance and how to own that. And so I was really interested in, in being part of the experience on that level as well. And uh, there's some interesting observations that I've made over the course of the ten months. And um, so for me, there was uh, absolutely those two things that were going on, something very personal and then also very public in terms of the So I think, uh, thanks to you, uh, Francis, and, and my friend for sharing this, and other people as well, like just, you know, being able to manage this site, manage this uh, um, platform, and, and bring us all together. So I really appreciate everybody's skills and talents. You know, I was pretty amazed at the um, at the well-known names that you guys had. Uh, how did you manage to, to get people to uh, come and chat with us without offering them money or, or fame or anything like that? It's just charming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just... Sorry, I think just reaching out to to people via email and saying, you know, we really uh, value your expertise and would love to have you be a part of this. And um, I know both Stephen and uh, Richard were, um, and I think Susan were, you know, delighted, and it it helped them to kind of think about and pull some of their things together and. Um, and narrow their focus on the topic, but um, just really generous people, you know, and uh, of giving of their time. Sorry, my son just get, came in. Um, but it was just uh, really cool that they, because you're right, they normally would probably charge a significant amount to speak to a group, and um, I think because they knew that we were uh, trying something new and being a part of that, it, it, it allowed them to uh, um, be open to it. Yeah, what I was going to say actually is, is what I was going to add to that is what I found the most interesting in this whole experience is how 
this platform, and when I say platform, I'm not talking about Google+, Plus. I'm not talking about Adobe Connect, I'm not talking about the technology per se, but the movement of open learning, the movement of MOOCs, um, and the fact that, you know, we did this OOE 13 as a year-long experiment, I think it revealed some new cultures in online learning and in learning in general. Um, and the one thing that really, really struck me is this thing, which it's a new word I did not know until we started all this, hutagogy, which is the self directed learner, not just this, uh, it's not just learner centered uh, learning, but the fact that what you want to learn, how you want to go about doing it, who you want to learn it from, um, is all led by individuals from bottom up. And because of that, that's how we managed to get all these, what we call famous people to come in and be a part of this, because it was declared as an experiment. And everybody was just discovering their own interest and and you know to be able to sustain whether it's 10 months or 12 months I mean it literally was a year long including our planning it was a year long and you're right it's surprising to see that maybe the numbers are not so massive as we thought it would be but it, it's amazing to see that people will still feel that you know this was something that we wanted to do and and it was enough of excitement within individuals that outside people who are famous and who do charge money were willing to come in for free and just be a part of it. I think that's, for me, that was the essence of what my experience was with OE is that none of us had to do this. None of us were forced to do this. Um, we all, at some point in the entire year, every single one of us had family problems, work problems, whatever problems, you couldn't make it, technology problems, we got kicked out of the system multiple times, we all got multiple experiences in that, and yet we didn't give up because we're all hudagogical learners. We want to learn because we want to learn, nobody told us to. So that's my two cents. Julie, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to comment about um, on what Mike said uh, in terms of Susan. She was, um, in my conversations with her, she was so eager to uh, combine her work with uh, SAMR, with content creation. It gave her a chance to do something with Mike Say, something that she hadn't yet done but was eager to try. So uh, I think it was a two-way street. Yeah, and you know, Rose, I really like. I'm sorry, go ahead, Brendan. No, finish up, Mike. Well, Rose, I really like what you said about the, the Hudagaji and, and that nobody told us we had to do this. Um, and I think for some people who have grown up in the uh, here are the steps that you have to follow do this, do this, do this, and very synchronous in their learning and, and that, that um, they may have struggled in this environment, but I think um, it's something that as we move forward, this type of learner is the type of learner that's going to be able to be successful, especially as I think about what K-12 education is like and, and moving beyond that. Um, I think this type of learning is going to be one that uh, as students become more self-directed, uh, it's going to lead them to be more successful than the one that says, just tell me what to do and I'll do it, to jump through the hoops of what school is supposed to be. Um, and so being able to curate their own learning and pulling in different things like we were able to do, I think it's a model that um, not just educators but learners can benefit from moving forward. Yeah, and, you know, that's interesting you mentioned that. That's one of the things that I think I've really learned uh, is though we do want the, the self-directed learner and we want everyone to be more of the self-directed learner, it does help everyone to have a couple of tasks to kind of hang your hat on to get started with. Um, in, so we can't just 
throw out something and, and say, learn on your own, here's some resources. But if, if we start out by saying, here's a couple of, try, a couple of things to try first, a, a couple of things to help, it's a really a good beginning. But to be uh, very clear that those are not required, those are just kind of like starter prompts, um, it helps out a lot. Um, and, and you know we've mentioned a couple of times the the numbers and um, you know it's kind of like earning that salary you know everybody's worked towards the the big salary we we want to work towards the big numbers to, to, to feel we're successful but uh, it, and it's hard to shake that that feeling that because we didn't have a thousand people signed up and we didn't have 300 people every week trying to to make their voices heard that somehow it wasn't as successful as it could be. But I think um, I've really been getting the sense from people this, this last month that uh, uh, they felt that their participation in this course has really been meaningful. Um, and it has really been a, a learning experience. And, uh, you know, it, and that makes it a success. Um, it wasn't, people didn't learn the, the million things I, I imagine they would learn, but they, they learned something that was important to them, and, and that made this a successful, uh, success, successful MOOC. Or open you know what really field. struck me? The way you ran this, Brendan, that, that was just buzz, bizarre. I will use the word bizarre. It was bizarre, but it was successfully bizarre, is that you made everybody into a moderator. I mean, that was just off the bat. When we started the planning group, I was like, what, huh? Everybody's a moderator, so it's too many cooks are going to spoil the broth. But that <laughs> was the learning curve that I found the most interesting because we are all professionals in our own fields. And by, by, by throwing us in the deep end of the pool by saying, okay, this is an experimental MOOC. It's not a classroom like your traditional online MOOC is. Um, we're all going to take charge and do whatever it is that we think we should be doing. And it felt uncomfortable at the very beginning before we officially started it. But it was, to me, that was, that was the best learning curve, actually. And then just the first two, three topics of our OE, just watching how everybody just rose to the occasion and just, and just took it, like, you know, grabbed the bull by its horns and just go. It was only after we started the OE officially, then I realized what you were trying to do, Brendan, by having everybody be responsible equally. It was, for me, that was, that was wild, bizarre, but successfully bizarre. And silence hits the whole platform. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't show up for, for a few weeks, and then when I do show up again and I say something, everybody just silence. Okay, make me feel like I'm not welcome here. I'm saying nice things about you, and you're making me feel like all not welcome. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's that little delay, so you want to wait a second for somebody else to make sure that they're not trying to say something. Uh, right. right. I, I, I really thinking how funny it was. Oh, I thought you were using the word this wasn't a traditional MOOC. I mean, how new is MOOC, but OE is beyond traditional MOOC. That's pretty funny. It was fun leading this MOOC and, and being a planner, but. Uh, I, I found the most enjoyable parts of this were really the parts where I was not running it. Uh, so when you guys is like your guys was the, the one of the first months where I kind of just sat back and, and did absolutely nothing. And it was really uh, it was really kind of fun to, to, to sit back and, and let somebody else lead everything and, and just participate and and having been a leader, I knew the parts were, you know, uh, maybe a, a word or a tweet or, or a blog post here would really be supportive of you. But, uh, you know, to sit back and, and be just a learner and say, wow, this is fun to watch somebody else do that was, for me, a really fun point. And, and a learning experience, too, because, uh, you know, watching how you did things was, uh, I was like, oh, yeah. 
uh, next time I have a, a topic or whatnot, I want to put that uh, or, or use that um, uh, strategy or whatnot. Oops, we lost Mike. Yeah, he's switching computers. He put a note in the chat there. Oh, I saw that. Well, I was just scro scrolling through all the other topics. It does look like there was, um, you know how we talk about your regular bell curve in a normal classroom where let's say it's a normal semester class, it's low and then it gets to the peak of the semester and then it goes down low again. Um, or in a semester that has a final exam, it starts low and then it peaks, it goes down and then in final exams and everybody goes up again. We don't have a final exam. I think what we did was we peaked and we went down and then we plateaued. But what's really interesting is that there is a plateau. And I think that is very very telling to what this level of hutagogy is, meaning who are the self-directed learners and to what level have we discovered our comfort. You know, we, we've tried everything new. We're willing to do the Twitter thing. I mean, God knows everyone knows about my Twitter saga. And, and you know, we, we, we tried and we failed, but then now we found our plateau. And I, I hope that, you know, whether or not we do an OE14 or we don't do it, but then we pay tribute to OE by mentioning it as an ongoing thing. I mean, maybe that could be it. It could be OE not as a defined el element, but it becomes this philosophy that we found our plateau of how we want to go about continually doing this professional development in an open community concept. I mean, to be very honest, I, I think we should continue in spirit but I'm not sure whether it would be something, unless there is a school district that wants to run it again, blah, 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 blah. I think it would be really nice to see how many of us maintain that plateau. And we're not all on the same plateau. Some of us are going to be higher, some of us are lower, but I think that would be pretty cool to just keep that as a, a hashtag somewhere. So maybe, you know, 10 months from now, I'm going to Google up Brendan Murphy with hashtag OE and there'll still be new stuff out there as opposed to just, you know, back from 2013 stuff. Hopefully. Hopefully. I know um, there was some talk of um, kind of folding it into the um, post-ed MOOC group, which has been going strong for over a year, too. Um, and there's a lot of us who are, who were in the at MOOC. Um, so, you know, that's one way of, of keeping it going. I do like the, the hashtag. Maybe we'll have to change it to OOE14 or 15 or something. But, uh, or just OOE. I mean, I guess for me, it's like I notice for myself when I'm sharing something just on the open Google Plus space, um, I tend to address it to the people who I think would benefit from whatever that, that particular topic is. And, and I'm going to just, FYI to myself, make a note to myself that, okay, from now on, if I think, as I'm sharing something, if I think that particular topic is in the same light or in the same spirit of OE, I'm going to try and hashtag it to OE because then even though it's a public post, it's still paying tribute to the, the cause. I guess that's what I was trying to say, rather than just, you know, rather than making OE sort of this really defined one year thing and the end of it and maybe or maybe not continue it to another year, maybe it should evolve into sort of more of a philosophy. You know, it's like ET MOOC now has become, ET MOOC has become more of a, a, a catchphrase. It's like it's in the spirit of that. Yes. You know, or DNLE becomes this, this adjective to describe, okay, if you're doing something to design a new learning environment as opposed to making a MOOC or something, you know, um, or making a class. So it becomes a philosophy. I mean, I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to throw in here is to what if OOE is, it may not be as big as those giants. Like at MOOC was a giant, DNLE was a giant, some of these bigger ones. Um, and, and what Mike was saying, this is the little one that, that that was, you know, the, the little MOOC that 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 was, and 
rather than it just being a MOOC, maybe it is a philosophy because when you think about it, I think the one thing that really kept us going was we believed in that same philosophy that this is an open experience. And I think you, you, I know, Brendan, that you really thought about why did you want to call it experience as opposed to course, yeah. you know, or, or community or something. You know, you, you chose the word experience, the, the open online experience, and literally I think that was the strongest thing that kept going in this entire year, the group, is that it wasn't talking specifically about a course or a subject matter or an objective or, or specific goals or school teachers in K-12 or higher ed or whatever. I think the common denominator was a group of people who were experiencing open online, either for the first time or as an improvement or, or, or they're already experts and they're sharing the experience. That is the theme or the, 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 the core crux of what this was. To me, I think that's what it was, so I don't know. Again, that's a positive thing I'm saying, okay? <laughs> All this silence and, and pausing in between is just driving me nuts. I know there is a, a pause, a delay, but I'm just, I'm just hyper, okay? I came back from my martial arts, so I'm still hyper, excuse me. <laughs> analogy to at MOOC is there. Um, I, I understand the, maybe the desire to fold it into at MOOC, but lots of cases that it's a little bit different. First of all, some people weren't in at MOOC, some were just in at MOOC. And also, I think it was um, certainly the people who, who organized at MOOC were um, egalitarian. I'm not, I'm not making any criticism, but I just, I think that this was very much uh, for a grassroots movement and where people like myself or people, anybody could say, can I, can I join the planning committee? Can I put my two cents in? And, um, and I think, you know, that, that is the, the root of, of what Roz is saying, that people can relate to that. And when we're, we continue to learn and, and, and uh, expand ourselves, regardless of where we go, there will be that root that comes back to say that this is the thinking, that this is the, the core thinking. And um, to, you know, to hashtag it or read it is probably a nice thing. It's the, it's a thread, right? It's the, it's the history. So it's the lineage, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like what you said just now where, you know, any everybody felt like they had the right and the place and the platform to put in the two cents. I think that was, for me, the most powerful part about OE as opposed to EdMOOC, which I was a part of. I was part of EdMOOC. I was part of DNLE. I did multiple other MOOCs, but I think the one thing that made this one different is everyone had their own two cents worth and regardless if you're a somebody or a nobody. I think it, that, and, and, and it really, there came a point where we didn't really even care whether you were somebody or nobody. You were just there, you know, sharing your experience. I always found it amazing that, um, that anybody actually came along for the ride on this. Um, because, you know, I could see, I, I saw Alex in, in EdMOOC and, and he has a following and, and he's a professor of education and, and you know, um, if he starts something, uh, it, it has, it has the weight, it, it almost like, it's like the it carries the weight of uni, University of Regina and, and, and his blog followers and, and his Twitter followers, you know, he has that weight behind him and, and um, you know, Stephen Downs and, and those other guys and George Siemens, and, you know, they have some weight behind them. I'm just, you know, I'm just a tech guy <laughs> at a high school. Um, the idea that anybody would come along with me uh, really amazes me every day when I think about it, you know. Uh, Except for maybe Mike, because we went to we went to a graduate school together, and so you know I could see him saying hi once in a while. But uh, 
the idea that uh, you know people from universities and and people from schools and in whole other countries uh, higher education people and in elementary people uh, it just amazes me every day when I think about this that um, you know we can create something that that people would be would want to be a part of and uh, and, and build it and it's it's not because it has the weight of uh, a university behind it or a learning institution, but because people want to be a part of things. That people say, hey, yes, um, I want to learn how to teach and I want to learn how to learn online and I want to learn how, what all this openness is and, and even I want to try some things out, you know. Um, so, you know. I don't know what to say about that, but th thank you for, for coming and, and being part of this because uh, it has certainly gone beyond anything that I had uh, hoped or imagined. I just pulled up the pictures of the people who were in it. I mean, it's for me interesting to see how many of these names have become names that I memorize. You know, it's like if I'm on Google Plus and I just see the the public stream, I know a lot of these names. And it's like what you said. It's interesting to know people did come in to OE, uh, big and small. When I mean big and small in terms of you know um, their their public. Uh, uh, popularity or their professional um, standing, people who are famous, people who are not. It, it, it's, it's pretty interesting to see how so many of these names have become common to us, to our eyes now, at least to me. I, I, I see these names and I know who they are. Um, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, I know your name now, Murphy. Too. Both Brendan Murphy. Yeah. So you've got two personalities in here. Look, where are you? You're here, owner, but then you're also down here. Where were you? I thought I just saw you. There, another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I like looking at the map of participants. I remember dropping that in. The the fact that we're spread around the globe. We have people in Japan and. Uh, Australia. Do we still have that map link? Where is uh, that map link? Yeah, here's the the big map. Where is that? Do you remember where it, where it would be? The link would be. Okay. If you pull it up, I'll stop sharing. You can share. You can click. You do it. The chat. Oh, okay. Where where is it? Uh, Was it in the welcome? Sure. Yeah. It's in the um, documents. Oh, sure. Was oh, that the first the first session? I don't remember where where we had that map. I do remember the map though. Was that on the connected learning? Man, it's such a long time ago now. Really sure a web page on this. I should. You would think I would know how to use Adobe <laughs> Connect by this time. <laughs> what you were trying to do? What share your screen? Just click on share my screen. Oh wait, is this it? No map of my fall. Uh, hold on. I saw it. It was October the second session. That's when we did the map. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the link to the map per se. We obviously learned something today. We learned how how we should organize better, huh? <laughs> oh, here I go messing with stuff. Where did that? Was that the screen? Yeah, there you go. Go share your screen now. It says share document or share whiteboard. I don't have no, it should be share my screen and then share desktop. Doesn't it give you that? Let me no. upgrade Mike. He came back again. Map of participants. Oh, I found it. Link to full map. Woohoo!
You going to share, Brendan? Or do you want me to share? Okay, I'll share it then. I found, I mean, I, I took your link. This is cool, though. But we still didn't hit Greenland. <laughs> well, I don't know if that updated, it should have updated automatically, but I don't think it has. So. I don't think so, yeah, it didn't update. Why, do we have someone in Greenland? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We have someone in Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Antarctica and Greenland. We have some, someone in India. No Russians either, Mongolia. And we didn't have anyone from China. Oh my goodness, how can we not have not had anyone in China? We, we did have somebody. We did, didn't we? I thought we had that girl from DNLE in China as well. Yeah, there was a, and she had left a message before we started saying she was going to try and follow along. But uh, I think uh, the, the whole Google being blocked out from China had a problem. Uh, that, that was one of the only problems there. And I know that we had the guy from Chad, the faculty in University of Chad. So, the, yeah, there's some people who are not on this map. Because yeah. I know we had a Nigerian, we had a Chad person. Um, I don't think we had Kazakhstan, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a few down people down. missing. I can see from Minnesota there's a couple people missing on there, so. Well, sorry, I wanted to simulate some of the technical difficulties from the beginning of the year, so I cut myself <laughs> kicked off. <laughs> that was a good demo, Mike. Very good demo. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that first time that we did it, and who was it who got kicked out like 11 times, and then I posted, oh, I'm on my 12th time, and then somebody else said, oh, 14 times, and it was this, this big you know, race to who gets kicked out more often. Well, I think the platform awarded. itself... I think there were badges, badges were awarded. Yeah. And it wasn't Adobe Connect. It was that other thing that you had tested. Remember that? What was that other thing? I don't... It was uh, Zen, Zen something. And, and it turns out that that would have worked fine uh, if we were all on Chrome. It, it had a problem with Firefox. Oh, is that what the problem was? Ah. Well, it's kind of like if you were in Google Hangout and you were on Firefox, it also would have a problem. Yeah. And then everybody has a problem if it's on Safari unless you're on an Apple. <laughs> But then things started changing. I mean, this by the end of the year now, a hangout with um, in, on Firefox does, is, you know, it's not a problem. So it's amazing how the technology changes in one year. A, a year ago, it, you know, we were struggling with this one, and, and now, you know, our struggle is Brendan can't remember how to use a program he's been using over two weeks for the last <laughs> ten months. By the way, I see we've got a guest, but the guest did not put any name down, so we're not quite sure who this guest is. I've upgraded, so whoever the guest is, if you want to turn on your camera, you're welcome to do that and and join in the chat. You've got audio and visual uh, privileges. If you click on the icon at the top of your screen, you should be able to join us in this discussion. So how many other places can you show up with the name of guest and become a a, uh, not just a, a participant, but a host. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, but, 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 but to answer you, Brendan, what you said just now about technology changing, we chose Adobe Connect because when we started this, Google Hangouts were not as user friendly as what they are now. Yeah. And and we were not able to record it without it going crazy on us and isn't that just amazing how the technology just evolved in front of our eyes just you know every day literally every day literally every day and I think the other thing that's really interesting is that in 
in the last year how prevalent video has become. Like when we did, for example, when we did Edmund, you know, we, we didn't even have, we weren't even asked if we wanted to be on video. You know, we felt pretty confident going into a room. Like, it didn't matter what you look like, it didn't matter anything, you just could go and, you know, you could work or you could, you know, baby talk. And now it's, you know, you never take that risk because 99% of the time it's going to be video. And that just, again, that shows the, how that this is a new normal. Yes. And the, the gap between, yeah. the, like for the people who've not done any online learning, I think that gap has gotten bigger than, say, you know, certainly a year or two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Because now you have to be not just comfortable showing up, not just comfortable maybe talking, but you have to also be comfortable being on the camera. Right? Like, yeah. The, you, know, right. the you know, it's funny. I just finished a, an Illinois virtual course. Um, it was free, and they gave me professional development units. But it was amazing. Their, their online teaching 101 was all about netiquette and email and responding and making sure you use your full name and talk to the person directly and don't be rude. And, and I was just looking at it going, you know, if you don't know this by eighth grade, you shouldn't be online. <laughs> this is... And this is a required course if you want to teach in the Illinois virtual school. There was nothing about pedagogy. There was nothing about content or curation or anything of that nature, which we have felt was important to teach. But, you know, in, in, in the open online experience, it, when we, we were talking about how you thought it was amazing that I just gave everyone moderation ability. I didn't put them through some silly test. You know, there's, there's no silly test. I just assumed that you guys knew what you were going to be doing if you wanted to take over control for a month. Uh, you know, granted, I'm not giving any degrees. We're not passing out degrees and, and we're not paying anybody. But, you know, I, I just find it laughable that we have to have such a basic test of, of skills and abilities and knowledge before uh, becoming teachers. <laughs> well, I, if, if I can, you, you just triggered me to share something right now at my university, my department. We run a summer institute for online teaching every year. It's a five-week full intensive online certification course that faculty take. Uh, it's not required though but um, if, if faculty take it they have to participate for five weeks and they get certified um, I know other universities require something similar before you're allowed to teach online but the point I wanted to point out was what you were saying what is the content of these courses these certification courses of which in theory when you're done with it you become a certified online teacher um, and I was because my department runs this course, uh, we all had to subdivide, and I was asked to update the content for module one, which was learning how to start. How do you start preparing for an online course? And I updated the content last year. Now, from last year's summer to this year, since we already updated the content last year, my boss didn't think we needed to update it this year. But now when I look at that content, I actually feel sick in my, my stomach thinking, that is what I recommended people need to know before you start teaching an online course. It is just bizarre how in one year the basic knowledge I think that you need is totally different. I mean last year I was talking just simple things like okay put your schedule online, make sure that you don't do certain things in a certain way because then your files will be having to be changed every so often. But now when I think about it, what are the basic things we need if we're doing open online learning? My goodness. Like you said, to, to trust another person to know what they're supposed to be doing is a big part of it. I wanted to, to jump in on uh, something that was mentioned a minute ago about the the video cameras and people being comfortable because I know that um, initially 
there was some pushback on having everybody on camera and some people were like I do not want to be on camera I'm not comfortable in that type of experience um, and I'd be more likely to share if I wasn't and I think that that whole aspect is something that I don't know if it's evolved through this experience or if people now who may have felt that way at the beginning of this experience um, feel that you know would say the same thing now or if it's just part of how we communicate I mean with uh, people being able to do a hangout from their phone or FaceTime what have you that will that go away or are there going to be people who say you know what I'll put my avatar up but I don't want my face out there and, and for some people that may be because of issues that they've had to deal with in their lives with stalking whatever the case might be I don't know yeah I think you're right there's going to be a lot of changes and you know not everybody is as comfortable as, as we four are I, there was just a, um, a hangout the other day that couldn't be broadcast live because the officiator or the, the starter of it said well I didn't mention to people that we would record this and, and some people aren't comfortable with that and, you know, those of us who couldn't make it, couldn't make it, kind of lost out on, on seeing it. But you know, I think that kind of thing is is going away. We're starting to realize that um, anytime we're having a meeting online, it, it like we've been telling our kids, anytime you do something online, you put a picture online, just assume it's going to be there public forever, even if you didn't want it to be. And, and if you're going to have a meeting online, uh, it will more than likely be an open meeting and recorded, uh, unless it's a technical, you know, in a business or whatnot. Um, so I well, remember that, that uh, remember well, that one um, guest speaker that we had. Um, I think it was your sister, the one who talked about her daughter being. Um, uh, stalked and and that's when she learned about what does it mean to actually have an open online experience and and responsibility and privacy and safety I think these are cultural new cultural things that um, have evolved tremendously e even in the last one year and and we're going to have to think about that as being a literacy that we need to embed within our normal everyday curriculum and whatever it is that we're doing with our students um, if we're in education. Um, and Brendan lost webcam capacity. And even something like that, to be unperturbed by things happening midway. That was a great demo, Brendan, by the way. Just like my, uh, Mike going offline for a while. I mean, these are the things. You talk about not wanting to be on video camera or people had pushed back in the beginning. I now remember when you said that, Mike, I remember there was one day Brendan wanted me to be online as well and I did because I opened up the, at that time we were new on Adobe Connect and I said, but but I'm going to turn off my webcam because I just came back from, from my martial arts practice and I was sweaty. But then this morning I'm like, okay, hey guys, I'm sweaty. I don't, you know, just letting you know and I'm fine with it now. But, you know, a mere six months ago, we had a different culture. Mm -hmm. And I think there's lots of uh, there's so many opportunities online if we can if we can get to that spot, right? So thinking about uh, all the opportunities that are coming out of Denver with uh, Ben Wilcox and all the the project roundtables. Right? Just you know, there's there's all kinds of those opportunities to participate or to, to be in the audience, but a lot of them have to do with being able to, to be on camera, being, you know, not being worried about what, you know, whether it's recorded or not. And I think back to that week, and I remember my own experience when, when Ben went from writing to video in his, in his home, and then went from video to walking the way Darren Kurapatwa does that. And then from the video and walking to now his Google Glass in his car, right? And so to see that trajectory of how it, um, that blogging, um, that conversation is weaving in our, into our lives in a, 
in a really natural way. And um, I think, you know, I, I think there's there's something to be said for that. There's a, 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 a nice way to communicate. And so there's some good examples out there um, of how we can engage and uh, personally in our conversations, but also professionally. But we have to get over the, the camera business for sure. Yeah. Well, hi, Donna. Hi there. Because I, 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 I thought that I had enabled the webcam a little while ago because I could see my picture up there. Yeah. But yeah, you have now to I've... not only enable it, but then say start sharing too. Yes. <laughs> well, Donna, this is that's an example of an old technology. This platform, Adobe Connect, is older. That's why it has that double click thing. I think the newer ones all don't require you to do that. Yeah, it didn't last time that I participated in. Uh, it was one That's of these no discussions. I think it was about it was uh, Carolina Botero, the copyright mm -hmm. presentation. Oh, that was a good one. We had that to was a good to, one. Yeah, it was good. And we had to move over to Google Hangouts though because something happened, got overloaded or something in Adobe Connect. I think we've had we've had every possible technology glitch in the past one year, don't you think? And we've recorded a couple of sessions where we didn't have sound, and that yeah, was one of them. Yeah, I was looking for Carolina. That was one of them that ended up on YouTube with no sound. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that was a really good discussion too. Mm. Yeah, because it wasn't a <laughs> it wasn't a hangout online. It was a video chat, and then I recorded it on my computer, but I was wearing my earphones. That was probably my fault. That was my fault because I started that hangout, didn't I? Yeah, it's all your fault. Liz. It's You're all my fault. It okay, it's my fault. I admit, on air, this is live online on air, and I am at fault. Okay. <laughs> A few moments ago, you were talking about uh, like how comfortable people are or are not being uh, videotaped, and particularly when it's posted online and then uh, open to maybe anybody in the public who chooses to search for it. And just as you were having that conversation, my husband walked into the room. He goes, what are you doing? Are you Skyping? So I said, yeah, because I didn't want to try to explain Adobe Connect. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, oh my goodness, I'm getting out of here. I don't want to be on the camera. <laughs> and he had but combed it, his hair and everything, so it wasn't that. No, it, it, it does. Just not wanting to be public. There, it's um, you know I have kids and, and and I know I think we've seen it a couple of times with some of these hangouts is uh, you know kids come in the room and they see you online and they're like oh and they stick their face in front of the camera <laughs> oh, hi yeah. I'm here pay yeah. attention to and me generational difference there the selfie generation <laughs> well you know the world is is changing in that way we've noticed how the tech has changed over the last 10 months, but uh, attitudes are kind of changing. The kids don't mind being online, and we're, and we're getting used to it as, as we do it more and more often. But, uh, you know, if everything is being recorded and is out there, uh, what's going to happen, you know, if you want to be a politician 10, 15 years from now, you know, everything mm -hmm. you did when you were 15 is, is going to be searchable and... and uh, we're going to have to start forgiving politicians for making mistakes or, or anybody famous. We're going to start having to... Brenda, what do you mean 15 years from now? Now. It's already like that now. And we're not talking about politicians. It's anybody because employers are already searching and looking online and seeing what's your, what's your trail, what's your online trail now before you hire somebody. They are, and, and, and I have seen some discussions where people are talking about maybe there needs to be a, a, like a 10-year window where anything more than 10 years old, you have to get rid of, that, which would really be nice for me because I actually, when I was 17 and at my high school graduation, you know, I did something stupid and, and got arrested, and for years I just ignored it because I was 17 and I just assumed that it was a, a minor record, but... Um, I had two years of probation, and, and I was 18, 19 when it, that ended, and so they considered me an adult. I was like, that's a little unfair. 
And now I'm 40 years old, over 40 years old, and I'm applying for jobs and, and I'm a teacher. So that question comes up every, on almost every application. Have you been arrested for anything beyond a uh, parking ticket or a speeding ticket? Right. And I have to say yes. When I was 17, more than half my life. You know, you bring up a really serious topic there. I think that in itself can be a whole seminar by itself about online safety, online security, online privacy. It, it, it's, a, it's a laughing matter when we just, you know, have a problem of not being able to listen to a guest speaker, Carolina, whatever, but then in reality, what happens if something like that is just, you know, online and somebody's trying to... to to measure whether this is this speaker is is professional enough or whatever, and suddenly there's this really bad YouTube recording someday from a few months ago or something, and it's really a botched up seminar online, and yet you're trying to get a job to being an online seminar provider or something. It it could be Brendan's seventeen year old experience. It could be our O E botched up hangout experience that we didn't think of, but you're right. It's a new world, and we don't have rules yet. It's the wild, wild west. The European well, think, Parliament uh, just passed um, a law around that, or some new regula regulation, and they're calling it the right to be forgotten law. Yep. Uh, that's about uh, private, uh, non non professionally kind of related things. And the, the test, one of the test cases, was an, a man who. Uh, had had his home repossessed like 10 or 15 years ago. And every time someone would search for his name, that kept coming up from a, an old newspaper article. And they talked about incidences like that. So in Europe, they have passed a more stringent regulation about uh, privacy, what can, what's private, what's public, and making uh, Google and you know big search engines responsible for taking things like that down when people request that it be taken down as irrelevant kind of thing. Right. I just found Donna, them. I was going to mention that same thing. Yep, and Rose is putting it up there on the screen. Um, I think with the privacy and public issue, though, I think it's interesting. I mean, even if you're an NBA owner and you say something in private, it can become public, as we found out. And I, I'm always reminded of the, the tweet that... Uh, Bud Hunt, Bud the teacher, sent out a few years ago where he said, don't you wish that people who complain about public versus private would just try to be a better person? And if we do that, whether we're in, in public or private, just be a, as good a person as we can be, you know, does it matter whether something is public or not? Um, and there's some people that would push back heavily on that, but I think it's an interesting thing to think about, although, Donna, as you said, in uh, in Europe, you're going to be able to scrub your your bad uh, digital footprints out, apparently, so. Or things problem. that might be uh, kind of irrelevant. I'm, I'm pretty high up on the, the desire for personal privacy, which might seem surprising because I don't have, uh, I'm okay, you know with uh, using Google Hangouts and, and systems like this on a professional level. And I haven't, uh, although I do think sometimes about um, opinions might be unpopular with certain uh, oh, people where you're applying for jobs, different universities and so on, might uh, prefer someone to have more of a, I don't know, <laughs> are, are you guys all down in the States? I'm up here in Canada. I was going to say, if you didn't, the difference between having a Republican outlook and a very Democratic kind of outlook, or in Canada, similarly, like having more of a left-wing approach versus uh, the right-wing and uh, our current conservative, conservative governmental kind of approach, that you might it might affect your um, being able to get different jobs. If you just state opinions, even about education from a particular kind of political perspective. Yeah, I, and I can see that happening in, in a lot of places. You know, you're, you're not probably not, well, I know you're not allowed to take political views 
into account in hiring decisions. But if you see it, if you do a Google search for somebody and you see them online, you, you see them and you can't unsee them, you know. And maybe they'll say at the end, I didn't hire this person because I felt someone else was better, but, you know. And, and maybe that is true. You, you need to fit in a little bit. So uh, having a, a variety of opinions is not bad either. Um, but, uh, you know, who's to say with what? I, I do know that the world is, uh, you know, my, my real point was we've seen massive change in technology and we're going to see, I think, massive change in, in, in perception. You, you cannot go on. Um, in this world, making your decisions on whether a person is good or bad, depending on uh, one or two activities they've had in the past, because the 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 idea that we we should be more private, there should be a, a separation, but at the end of the day, if you want to find out something about somebody's personal life, it's not going to be difficult to find it. And it's going to be a choosing not to look at it, rather than a not being able to find it. And, uh, On the public private to... thing, I, I think you're right about that. Um, that's the way the world is going. On another aspect of the public private, I think about um, me being okay with doing a number of things in the in open education, and then our contacts though. Oh, I don't know, family members or other people who are connected to you in different ways, uh, they can lose their privacy too because one is willing to, you know, I'm willing to open up my own. And so people close to me can also be Google searched. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not just um, making decisions about our own privacy, but about the privacy of people around us. And some of those might be young people. And, um, and we don't want to get too much off track. We were <laughs> really just kind of talking about what we've learned. And, and this is a big thing that we've learned. I think that ties in really well with uh, the whole, the learning we've done over the year, in digital citizenship and content curation and teaching and learning online. And privacy is a huge part of that. And not only teaching it to our kids, but, but modeling it. So, um, and, and we have run past our hour. Uh, so we will come on to an end, and I like Rose's suggestion that, that we finish on a blog post. Uh, what have we learned? Um, continue tweeting using the OOE 13 tag. Um, we didn't use just plain OOE because it was taken by something else. But uh, if anyone has any final uh, monologue they'd like to give us, please take, it, take your time now. If not, thank you very much for coming, and, and I have enjoyed your presence today and over the last year or so. So, um, and yeah, reconvening sometime I think is a good idea. Well, are you saying that the hashtag OE is taken up already? Yeah, that was why we didn't use it before. It's some, it's not a big one, but it's used by some little town in Canada, I think, actually. Really? Yeah. The OOE. So is this a different OOE group than the Canadian one? Because <laughs> that's the one I jumped into in April. <laughs> no, no, it's not a group. It's it, uh, it's just a hashtag that someone was using on Twitter. Uh, to uh, bring attention to something, right? I forget what it is now, but um. well, well, Brendan, let's look at it this way. Then I would suggest if we keep to OE thirteen, let's not have the thirteen as signifying a defined timeline, but it signifies a starting point, and that this is when we decided OE would start, and so it would be the same hashtag, whether or not we run again because it should be an ongoing thing I think maybe it should, you know the OO instead of just open online it could also be ongoing 
online, ongoing open experience. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, I think it's nice that we had that um, as a as a philosophy as opposed to a course. I think it's nice that OE is is more than just an online course. It's not a course. It's a it's a mutual understanding. Sounds good to me. I can I can deal with that. <laughs> All right, let's All right, end up the report. Thanks a lot. It's been great chatting. Great seeing Thanks, you, Jonah. Julie. Glad to see you online. Glad to see you online. Have a great right. day, folks. You too. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Bye.